vlog and art tour. So anybody who has been following me on Instagram will know that I've recently been on vacation. I went on vacation to the Netherlands. I was there for quite a long time and I saw lots of places. I think I visited nine different cities in the space of about two weeks. So lots of travelling. I did take a few supplies to do some sketching with. So I'm going to go over that in a minute. And I also purchased plenty of art supplies as I found some local cheap, some local cheap deals. So, what I took with me is this artist, well, this palette. I'll get to this in a second. And I also took some paper, both hot press and cold press. I took a few different pens, pencil, normal supplies, and I took some little brushes as well. These managed to survive, luckily, as <laughs> they're not travel brushes. So, the palette that I took was this one. This is the Winter and Newton water brush palette. I have purchased this one recently for a series of videos I'm doing on this channel, so do keep an eye out for that. However, I replaced the paints in these with artist grade paints. So I'm just going to go over those. They are Permanent Red Middle by Rembrandt, Alizarin Crimson Permanent by Windsor & Newton, Azo Yellow Light by Rembrandt, uh, Magenta by Schwinker, Slaven in a Blue Deep by Old Holland, Delft Blue by Old Holland, uh, Savarine by Schwinker, this one is Sepia by Snellier, this one is Dioxine Violet by Windsor & Newton, this is Schmincher's, Schmincher's Payne's Grey, so it's the, their brand version, the, the black one, not the blue one. Uh, this one is Van Gogh's um, Burnt Sienna, and this is Old Holland. I think it's called Mars Yellow. It's a yellow ochre colour. I didn't actually use this brush at all while I went away, as it's, it doesn't have a very big re reservoir, and the brush is quite small itself. So I didn't get much chance to use it. I mostly used it for adding fresh water to my mixes, which I have here. And this was a really good choice of colours actually, it covered pretty much most of it. Have I just broken that? Yeah. Whoops. There we go. <coughs> right, so, close that up. Paper I took was cold pressed Windsor and Newton paper and Dale Rowney hot pressed. So, I'm just going to go over the few sketches I've started. They're not all finished as didn't have a lot of time for sketching, but I did try my best. If you want to see the completed finished sketches, do follow me on Instagram and DeviantArt to see the finished pieces. So, that's when I started. This is the girl with the pearl earring. It's in its very early stages. I've only done like one wash on it, on it. two maybe. The next one I've got is some local food. The local food in the Netherlands is amazing so much this one here is their their chips or fries and they have like weird sauces with them like peanut sauce curry sauce and mayonnaise and mixtures of them and it's really good uh, this is iced tea now as a Brit iced tea is not really available here as it's probably illegal as British people love their hot tea but I really like their iced tea over there it's really good uh, and this is a stroop waffle which is a local Dutch delicacy it has recently been made more worldwide thanks to Starbucks who started selling it and then other supermarkets started to import it. But it's re they're really expensive over here compared to over there. It's like half the price over there. And this is the finished one. This is the landscape in one of the city cities that I visited. And I'm really happy with how this came out. I'm not really a landscape painter. It's not my forte. But I quite like how this one came out even if it's not perfect. That's, I've also got other sketches of the cube houses in Rotterdam, which I've started, but I've not got that here. I'm going to speak about that one in a minute. Right. So, on to the art hall. Let's start with something boring. And that is watercolour tape. Whenever I buy anything online or go into an art shop, I always forget to pick up watercolour tape. I want to try it out and stretch some paper. See if it makes a difference to the overall painting. So I purchased this. Right, let's get some. 
next things that I purchased from a shop are paint pigments. And I just found these. These, are, these were quite cheap. About four euros each. They are genuine pigments. They're not imitations or anything like that. I'm not going to reveal the names of them just yet. Keep that a secret. Do keep an eye out for updates and when this paint will become available on my Etsy store. Now, the Netherlands has two paint companies, different ones. There's Royal Talons, which produce the Van Gogh and the Rembrandt watercolours. And there is also Old Holland, which is an older brand. And they claim to have made paints for artists such as Van Gogh himself. And I've got something else. So one thing I picked up was some gouache. The, this is the Van Gogh gouache. Even though it says Van Gogh, it is artist quality. Van Gogh in gouache is artist quality gouache. Van Gogh in watercolour is student grade watercolour. So this is a set, I think this cost about 10, 11 euros. It's a little bit cheaper than what I can get it here in the UK. It's come with full size gouache. I will be doing a trial and little review of these and comparing them to Windsor & Newton gouache, which I have quite a collection of, as you may have seen from my previous art haul videos. Let's get on to the actual watercolour. So, the old Holland line, because I would like to add some more to my collection, I have India Red, which is PR 101. I was introduced to pigment itself by E. Bolt, who sent me some watercolours, which were really nice watercolours. Go check that video out if you've not seen it yet. Next one I have is Warm Sepia. I was introduced to this colour from a Sennelier set and I enjoyed the colour, so I purchased it in Old Holland. Um, we have Italian Earth. I think this is like a raw sienna colour. It's a similar pigment, I think. And finally, from Old Holland, I have Slavonia Warm Grey. Now those in the Netherlands were a little bit cheaper than what they are in the UK, but not massively. I also have some Anko colours which I purchased, which are Mudder Lake Deep and Azo Yellow White. Now the Van Gogh line of watercolours is, in my opinion, just as good as the student as the artist grade. The student grade is just as good as the artist grade, which is the Van Gogh and the Rembrandt. They're pretty comparable. This, they're about the same price per tube, but you get 10 milliliters of this tube as opposed to 5 of the Rembrandts. Now, something which I really confused me when I was over there was that the Rembrandt paint is actually more expensive in the Netherlands than what it is in the UK. I'm not sure how that one works, but it just does. Over there, it was about 4 to 5 euros per tube, which is about £3.90 to about £4.70. Tube. Over here, it's about three pounds a tube. Maybe three ten, three twenty if it's a um, like a series one, no higher series paint. So massive difference in price. And what was even weirder is the Winter and Newton paint over in the Netherlands was cheaper than what it is here in England. Um, I think the explanation for that one is that the factory for Winter and Newton is in France, so maybe it's easier to get it to France, um, the Netherlands from France. Okay. And it gets even weirder still, as I went to Germany for a day, and the old Holland paint was cheaper in Germany than what it was in the Netherlands. So I'm going to leave you to uh, ponder on that one. Now, from one art shop, I got a freebie, as I did spend a little bit of money there. And the freebies that I got were Quinette Bredome Magenta by Winter and Newton, and some Fabri Arno. This is a brand that I've been looking to try and looking to experiment with watercolour papers. The problem with that is they're quite expensive, ranging anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds for like a 12 sheet pack. So this is going to be good to experiment on and to try the brand out. Now, as I did, said, I did visit Germany, and Germany do have some really good cheap watercolour paints. I was mainly looking for Schmincke, but I found them not to be much different in price to over here, as it was something like, I think it was like 3 or 4 euros for a tube, which is about the 
same as what it is over here. It's about three to four pounds for a tube of, for like a low series tube of watercolor paint sprinkler. However, paints I did find really cheap, which surprised me how cheap they were, was Lucas paints. So I purchased quite a few of these. I will be reviewing these in a later video. So these were really cheap. These are about three euros at a half pan, which is really cheap. And the big 20 milli 21 milliliter tubes they had were about seven euros. In the UK here, they're anywhere from eight to 10 pounds for a big tube, depending on the series. So massive difference in price. And it's quite a good little find that I managed to get. I also purchased from the Netherlands a Daniel Smith Durocomb Lapis Sunlight. This is a effect paint, and I've just shown the swatches here. This is what that looks like. So that's it on white, it just has a shimmer. This is it over colours and mixed with some colours as well. I really like how the mixed colours it because it makes it all uh, pearlescent, which is quite nice. I also purchased when I got back to the UK online a tube of Lucas just to try it out compared to the pans. So I'm going to swatch out the colours I purchased now. Not the Lucas brand, I'm going to save them for a review. So So I believe that's all the colours I have swatched, that I've, paint, that I've purchased. And I hope you enjoyed this little vlog. If you want to see more updates of the finished paintings and other bits from while I was away, please do check out my Instagram page. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.